Hello there, fans and frenemies, and welcome back to my channel! Uh, today, I'm going to be rambling non-stop about the Living Tombstone because I love them, and I would die for Yo Vlando in a heartbeat. Also, yes, new persona. Um, I feel like Nightbite has become less of a persona and more of a character with their own personality. Um, so, this is just me, uh, but as a cat. Uh, so this is kind of a format idea I've been really excited to do because I know people really like voiceover on speed paints, but I really hate editing Nate Speaks videos, so this is uh, sort of me mushing them together. Uh, so let me know how you feel about this format, if you like it, if you don't like it, you know, blah blah blah. Alright, let's get into it. Set the scene. It's 2012. You're 17. You've just graduated high school, and now you're living on your own for the first time. You don't have many friends, but you've got the internet. And then the Living Tombstones remix of Discord goes absolutely viral. Yeah, okay, so this song, it rules. Everyone knows that. There's no debate. Discord is bomb. Uh, so like a lot of people, that's where I first ran into Yove's music. And from there, I went on to consume basically everything I could find that he'd ever made. Uh, and I've been following him ever since. I I've listened to every song for the last 10 years, and most of them, on release day. Uh, I, I genuinely don't know how to express what it is specifically. I, I don't know enough about music to put the words together to define what it is, but there's something incredibly special about his music that hits different from other artists. Almost everything he makes hits for me. I get the same vibe from Avicii and Toby Fox, but I, I don't really know how to define that vibe. The remixes of the Friendship is Witchcraft music are especially fun bops from back in the day, but his FNAF songs were fantastic, and there's a reason that they took off. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of them. Basically, everyone has. They've got a patrillion hits on YouTube. Um, his first FNAF song really hit, like, different at the time. I think it was the first FNAF song anyone ever made. Um, it definitely was like the first to get really big, but I think I read somewhere that it was actually the first FNAF song anybody made. Um, and it was so early, I, I would believe that. It really showed a love for the source material um, and an understanding of the story. And it wasn't talking down to the audience. It was a fun, awesome bop, but it was also like, legitimately, I enjoyed this thing that I am singing about. And people could really feel that, you know? that That's why his fan songs always feel really good. You can tell he likes the thing that he's talking about. Um, you can really feel it. It's good. He really understands it. I like that. Uh, Die in a Fire was just like, oh, incredible. Um, and I know he, he said that he wasn't going to make any more after the third one. And I was like, I get you. That makes me sad. But like, oh my God, you've made three of them. I totally get it. Uh, but then he went and made I Got No Time and I Can't Fix You. And uh, I think I think that's not even it. Um, I, I, I could listen to I Can't Fix You every day for the rest of my life. It, whew, it goes off. Uh, but you have made original music pretty infrequently. Um, I think when he did, he was always disappointed because it never got the same response as FNAF or pop culture stuff did. And that's something that a lot of internet artists deal with. The pressure to do fan art when you don't want to. Um, it, it breaks my heart for him when he spoke about the stress and burnout he was dealing with. Because I've, I've dealt with burnout and it, it sucks. And there's a lot of pressure because you will almost certainly get more hits if you do if you draw something that's really popular than if you you know start with your fresh new original content, and it's it's really demoralizing. So I, I totally get why he was like bummed about that. My ordinary life is my favorite original TLT song from before his album. It's not the only one, but it's my favorite. It's really a proto zero one song because TLT just used to be Yove, but now it's him and Sam Haft, who's the vocalist who also works on writing the songs. And he worked on this song too, which is why it feels so much like Zero One. It's really amazing. It's a fun beat to bop to. I can sing along, but the lyrics and the rhyme scheme are like legitimately really impressive. Um, there's a lot of pathos to it. Lines like, they act like they're below me, I act like I'm above, and when you become untouchable, you're unable to touch, are so brief and yet carry so much weight. Lines like, they tell me that I'm special, I smile and shake my head, I'll give them stories to tell friends about the things I said, really convey to me so much feeling and so much narrative. Uh, parasocial relationships, fame, pressure, influence. Um, it sort of reminds me of Bo Burnham's Art is Dead in a really good way. 
Uh, at the end of the day, though, it's touch me Midas, make me part of your design that totally wrecks me. Uh, Midas being the king with the gold touch, everything he touches turns to solid gold, including food, including people. Um, so touch me Midas, make me part of your design. Touch me and make me something special and beautiful and valuable, but also dead and frozen too. It's uh, a piece of just like artwork. As a line, it's pure poetry. I, I jam to it. And then in 2020, everything was terrible for everyone. But one good thing happened. Uh, TLT dropped his first album. Oh my God, Zero One is incredible. Holy cow, just go listen to it if you haven't. It changed my life. Oh my God, I never talk about music like this. Um, I. I'm tone deaf. I really just, I just can't, like, I can't put the words to it. it. My brain doesn't like it. I like to listen to music. I can't talk about it. But I could talk about Zero One for days, for hours. Like, I had to cut this video short, like, six times because it was legitimately, like, 35 minutes when I first did it. And no one wants to hear me talk for 35 minutes. So he dropped the music videos for some songs leading up to the release of the album, right? And Drunk was the first one out. And when it came out, there's this little teaser at the end uh, of the last few seconds of Sunburn as a stinger. And I, I don't know why, but just those few seconds, like, wormed their way into my brain and made me insane. I, I was like, this is incredible. I, where's the rest of this? What is this? Is this a song I don't know about? I thought I knew every song. What is this? And no one was talking about it in the comments. I went to the subreddit. I went... I joined the Discord and was looking around, and I'm like, um, hello, why are we not talking about this? What is this? Um, and after not finding an answer for several hours, I finally was like, ugh, okay, I give up. And then, you know, next week, Sunburn dropped, and wow, yeah, no, uh, it, oh my god, Sunburn is my favorite song. It, it floored me. Sunburn is my favorite song of all time, like, hands down. Uh, Mari Mariana's Trenches, The Killing Kind, is up there too, and like, it's really fighting it for that spot, but Sunburn, Sunburn wins. Uh, whenever I listen to Sunburn, it just eviscerates me. I am on my knees, I am howling at the moon, I am screaming the lyrics like I'm dying. I'm just, I'm reduced to a wailing mess on the floor. It gets me. You smile and I get sunburned, it gets me every time. Every single time. There are so many incredible tracks on this album. Uh, Drunk is such a brutal song. I've, I've never heard anyone talk about alcoholism like this before. This totally upfront, brutal way. I don't speak about this very often, um, but when I was 18 uh, to 19, I was living overseas in a really bad situation. Um, and I was isolated and miserable and kind of in danger. I, I owed people some money that uh, you don't really want to owe money to. And, you know, I, I, was, I was under a lot of pressure, and I wasn't dealing with it very well. And uh, this was a country where um, the legal drinking age was 18, uh, so I, I could drink and buy alcohol. And I, di I did. I bought a lot. And it got to the point, it got bad enough that um, I, I was drinking a shot or two f straight from the bottle every morning before I went to work just to, just to find the motivation to go and to get through the day. It, it really got that bad. Uh, no worries, I, I don't drink anymore, but this song really hit for me in a way that nothing else ever really has. It, it's very confronting. Uh, I prefer the spooky mix of Longtime Friends to the original, but it's also just, like, fantastic. The, uh, the Love I Need is a song that I was actually neutral on at first, but it grew on me, like a fine wine. Uh, it's a song that I don't think people always get. Uh, looking at the comments especially, people get that it's about an abusive relationship, but I, I don't think everyone kind of gets it. Like, I don't think it's an abusive relationship with an individual. I think it's about an abusive relationship with your audience. Uh, you know, an abusive parasocial relationship. And it, it, it has a lot to say about that. Ugh, what I want. What I want is the thesis statement of the whole album, isn't it? Uh, the video is amazing. It's in stop motion and like, ah, oh, it's so cool. Uh, but it, it just gives me this twisting in my gut. Uh, the way he goes from this sad, depressing existence to this bizarre descent into darkness beneath the world that's very much larger than life, and then walks through the crowd and the band on stage is the new design for his fictional band, uh, and one of them reaches down and takes his hand and he transforms in one of the characters who represents himself and, and suddenly changes his whole demeanor and it, it feels triumphant. But at the same time, uh, to me, it, it feels like watching someone throw away 
everything they really are to become this idealized version of the self that doesn't really exist. Uh, touch me Midas. It, it's really a beautiful video, but it's a brief part of the lyrics right before that happens that really sticks with me. Uh, just before he takes to the stage, the song slows down and he sings really softly, I want to sing and make songs, I want to dance all day long, I want to be a big part of a big corporation. And that part means so much to me. I've, I've spent so much time thinking about it. As an artist, you're, you're not supposed to sell out. You're not supposed to want to. There's a stigma over even making money on art at all, as if artists shouldn't make a living income. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, when you, there's this idea that pure art shouldn't be done for money, that only, only real art is done for free or something. You know, the starving artist is the, what you should strive for. Um, that's, you, sh you should not want to be a starving artist. It's sad, it sucks. I've, I've been there and it's not fun. It's, you're not making better art just because you're hungry and miserable. Uh, but it, I, I, I understand what he's, he's saying here. And it means a lot more because he did in fact sign a contract with a big company, you know? So it's, he's no longer an independent artist. And so he's, he's not talking metaphorically or hypothetically. He, he's talking specifically about something that really happened. And it, it, it's so much more than just, I want to be a big part of a big corporation. It's, I want the stability of a guaranteed income. I want the legitimacy of that recognition and that platform. I want the safety and the validation. And I want to stop fighting so hard to make it on my own. And I'm willing to sacrifice something to have that. And you're never supposed to say that as an artist. But I truly understand it. It's really powerful to me. A really brave and vulnerable Thing to admit and I really love this song. Lazy is like an entirely new level of metatextual commentary and I, I love it. I they're just I can't wait is wow a hard song to listen to but also a bop. Just the whole album is really really incredible and listen if you've only ever heard Discord or TLT's FNAF songs just do yourself a favor and just like go listen to Zero One like right now. It kind of ruined my life. Bye. Oh, I need to fix my waving animation uh, while I'm drawing. That was the wrong hand. Nobody mentioned that. <laughs>